Hello, welcome to Ikate's Crossing as we continue Journey of the Heart, Chapter 6, Part 3. Passion is path. Because romantic passion has led to countless broken lives and marriages, many people have turned against it and condemned it altogether. Writers such as Dennis Rodgman, Scott Peck and Robert Johnson regard it as an antithesis of mature human love. As derogement writes, passion love is an impoverishment of one's being. Passion wrecks the very notion of marriage. What these writers rightly criticise is the misguided attempt to make a relationship the main source of our spiritual fulfilment. Yet, in trying to set things straight, they go to the other extreme, discounting any larger dimension of passion altogether. When Peck writes, love is not a feeling, but an act of will, he is arguing for all war. All work, no play, for earth at the expense of heaven. In so doing, he fails to appreciate the unconditional nature of passion as a deep resonance with life's great beauty. Underneath all the distorted, distorted forms it may take, devaluing passion or trying to exclude it from marriage only diminishes the vital spark between a man and a woman that propels their journey forward. This leaves us stuck with a hollow, stagnant form, along with an irresistible urge to break out of its constraints. So while indulging in addictive passion promotes delusion and death, denouncing passion altogether only maintains the crippling schism between heaven and earth. Romantic inspiration and marital commitment that it has plagued love in the Western world for centuries, neither inflating passion nor condemning it gives us a path. The heavenly side of passion is an ecstatic urge to break out of our habitual patterns and realise a vaster sense of being. Yet, unless we can ground this energy by bringing it into an I-thou relationship, it will take a distorted form. When we split off its heavenly side from earth, we fall in love with love, becoming more enamoured with our excite own excitement than with the reality of an ongoing partnership, fearing that bringing passion down to earth will ruin our high. We are unwilling to bring it into one-pointed focus, to engage with a real person with any constancy or commitment to take hold. At the other extreme, if we overemphasize passion's earthly side at the expense of heaven, we cannot let go or relax our focus on a particular person, whom we must have and cannot live without. In the heavenly distortion, addiction to our own excitement prevents us from devoting ourselves to another person. In the earthly distortion, addiction to the other person prevents us from feeling the larger source of aliveness within ourselves. When we can bring these two sides together, joining heaven and earth true devotion, passion without fixation, becomes possible. The key to overcoming the torments of passion lies in realizing that this energy arises from our larger being and can never be entirely satisfied by any finite person or thing. Its intrinsic nature is egoless and pure in that it is ultimately a desire to experience the fullness of life itself. Whether it leads to, develop, to devotion and surrender or else to fixation and addiction depends on what we do with it. For passion to become path, we must learn to dance on the razor's edge of this energy. Now taking hold, now letting go, now focusing our passion with single pointed intensity, now releasing its focus and feeling its source in the life flowing deep within us. In this way, we can begin to ride the energy of desire instead of getting swept away by it. We can let it resonate through us and flow towards others without having to cling to them. As we learn to keep our seat and ride our passion, we also become more open to the little flashes of falling in love that are always available. With a leaf falling through the air, the red sun rising behind a range of darkened hills, or a face that we glimpse on the street. 
These flashes do not have to mean anything terribly serious. We surely don't have to chase after everything that stirs our passion. By simply appreciating the pure quality of this energy as it arises in the moment, we can let ourselves fall in love lightly without becoming obsessed. In an ongoing relationship, a couple's passion may express itself in many different ways. Sometimes it will roar like a mountain torrent. Sometimes it will lie still and contained like a deep, quiet pool. And sometimes it will flow gently like a broad stream meandering across the plains or carelessly like a river emptying into the sea. Changing like the weather and the seasons, a couple's passion could be romantic and sweet, sad and tender, or fierce and driving, depending on the circumstances. If they can let their passion move freely, it will keep finding new and different forms of expression, not just in making love, but also in cooking a meal, going for a walk, having a fight, or just sharing their thoughts and feelings. It will begin to suffuse every aspect of their relationship, becoming a magnetic bond that will hold them together through the most difficult of times. When two people recognize the true nature of their passion as a powerful radiant heart energy that wants to shine forth flow freely and connect with life at large. They will not need to suppress this feeling or try to maintain a feverish intensity. This will keep their love fresh and allow them to keep falling in love with the phenomenal world and with each other again and again. With each other again and again. Okay, before we read chapter 7, let's have a look at this reading that I did at the beginning of the chapter, at chapter 6. What were the cards that I actually got? From Vesta's Art Love Oracle tells us that something is missing from whatever's going on in the moment. Okay? Something is missing from the relationship. Okay? And it could be that passion, that allowing that passion to flow freely, right? So it's very much about being in the now. Enjoy each moment for what it is. Super, super important. Now, the next lot of cards we got. Okay, so we got that sense of self-expression. Allowing those moments to be expressed in a way that's important to us. To be able to see things clearly in the direction that we want to go within this relationship, right? Vision with clarity. We're able to see with clarity the direction that we want to go with this relationship and how we choose to be in each moment. Super, super important here. And music could be part of that passion. You know, maybe you have a moment to just listen to the music, the beat, the rhythm of the relationship. The relationship could be that music. I'm not talking... Um, maybe we're not talking about music as in music, as in that loud thing, but the internal music we have within the relationship, that beat, symbolically, the music symbolically within the relationship, the music that's created, the energy that's created from the relationship. So that could be that music. So that's interesting here, and that comes from that passion, allowing the, you know how music flows freely, you know, the music, that beat, flows through um, freely within its realm of the song, right? So that's going to be the relationships going to have those ups and downs, those beats, those notes that we grab onto that allows us to have that clear vision to have of what the relationship um, is in the moment. Not our, we're not having a, when I'm talking about vision, I'm not talking about our dream or our goal or our perspective, our perspective, what it actually is in that moment, that acceptance of what it is, having that clear vision about what the relationship actually is, is important, okay? Having that clear vision, super different than having a 
dream about what something wants to be. I'm talking about having a very clear, clear, a very clear acknowledgement of what this relationship actually is in this moment. And being able to express ourselves freely, be given the permission to, and I'm getting a lot of blues here, so again, we're getting that throat chakra, being able to communicate clearly, being able to express ourselves clearly in many ways, and being able to see the truth, the you know, not just the perspective, but the actual truth, acknowledge the truth of what this relationship actually is. Not with, with, not with um, colored roses or, uh, you know, rose-colored glasses, um, rose-colored glasses, whatever that is, that mean, that that um, when you sit, don't really see the truth of the situation, it's important that you see the truth. You have a clear vision about what that relation, what the relationship is actually like, and allow the passion to flow naturally within it. But don't let it get extreme. But acknowledge when you're feeling extreme, and just allow it to sort of flow naturally. Don't get too obsessive about it. Um, don't let that passion overtake you can be quite important sometimes we sort of got to go okay I can acknowledge this passion where I am what do I need to do to sort of to calm it down a little bit but allow it to to keep flowing forward in the relationship you know what I mean don't lose yourself in that way it's an interesting perspective when you sort of look a little bit deeper let's throw in I just want to throw in a dark mirror card and I know everyone goes, oh, why are we looking at the dark aspects? But it's important that we're looking at the passion. When we're looking at the passion, when we're looking at the now, when we're looking at what's missing from the relationship, that we actually have a look at, oh, this card flew out. What's this one here? Bride in a cage. Oh, what an interesting card as we talk about this. Bride in the cage. Okay, what number is this card? 21. I always got to look at, remember to look at the number so we can look at this here. So here when I look at this card, when I talk about bride in the cage, it feels like you are that um, roaring, that sense of you're so crazy with your passion that you've let it get the better of you. You're unable to function normally in your life. You're so enraged, you're so, that you have to be caged. You have to be, I get that sense of your, your, um, you're so you, I just get this great, I get this vision of being this crazy, crazy bride, where you are absolutely, you know, you're obsessed with what's going on, you're obsessed with this, pa with this partner, this relationship, and you're pushing it to its brink with your passion, you're losing yourself, you're losing who you truly are, you're doing what you expect, instead of what is. But let's have a look. Card 21. Let's have a look and see what it says in the book. Okay, so. Oops. What does it say in the book? Okay, there is a, a stage of denial. Tomorrow will be the right moment. Tomorrow will we be better even if today is hell. Okay, so we've got a gorgeous white wedding dress shines through the neon grey artificial light of the evening. It is torn by the mannequin with a dissociated skeleton head. It seems like a happy place if not for the light. The mannequin stares at the outside while a purple laser grid cage holds it in. Did we die waiting for the perfect day or were we never alive? Going dark. Okay, let's take a minute, take a nice deep breath and take a moment to reflect on this. As you reflect on that last chapter of the book when we talked about passion. Okay. When we put the good of our life just in our expectations we can dismiss the present waiting for the dawn we know will arrive the future becomes a shopping cart it needs a bit of this a bit of that a few kilograms of that and also a couple of boxes of another this when we look at it it shines like a brand new day in a commercial and as it happens with commercials when the future comes it's not exactly perfect the smile is forced, the day is too hot or too cold, the kiss is dry, the lion limps softly and doesn't roar. As long as something is not here, 
but is pushed further along the timeline, we have the luxury to take it off reality and treat it as a fantasy. We push forward and we push forward until we actually catch up with our dreams and then we crush. The future should not feel like a cage, not even a gilded, wonderful, handmade designer cage. The future is a tree, nailed rough to the touch, full of flowers only in spring, dense and damp through the rain, absolutely imperfect. So with that passion, are we waiting for you know, that passion that can override us you know, with us instead of looking at the actual truth of the situation? We are, you know, we've overwhelmed us with this passion that is stopping us from actually seeing the perfect day. We're in denial with this passion. Ooh, interesting. When you sort of tie it all in, it does give you food for thought. Okay. So take a nice deep breath. Let it go. And just sit for a moment in what the passage in the book was telling you, what the cards have brought out, and how it ties in all together. Sit with it for a moment. Take a nice deep breath in through your nose and out through your mouth and sit with it. And be ready for chapter 7. That's it from me. Don't forget to check the links down below. Check the links on my channel. Like, subscribe and ring the bell so you know when the next video will be uploaded. Take care.